Hey, hi, real quick, before this video gets started, if I sound sick, it's because I am sick. I'm trying to get this video out because it's very time sensitive. You'll understand why in just a second. But first, I just, I sound weird and I apologize. Cool? All right. Let's, let's start the video. This is an iPad. And this is DaVinci Resolve on an iPad. Let's talk about it. Before we get started, I just want to thank Blackmagic Design for allowing me to be one of the first to test out this beta version of DaVinci Resolve for iPad. That being said, this video is not sponsored by Blackmagic Design. No money exchanged hands and Blackmagic Design gets no say in what I say in this video. Also, please keep in mind that this is just a first look. And like I said, this is a pre-release version. So things are likely to change a lot between now and when the full version of DaVinci Resolve for iPad is released. But once that happens, I'm going to be making a lot of videos about it. We're going to be doing a proper review, some tutorials, and even comparing it with other mobile editing apps like LumaFusion. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of that. Okay, let's open up the iPad and jump into DaVinci Resolve. Man, that's weird to say. The first thing you need to know about DaVinci Resolve for iPad is that it's not the full version of DaVinci Resolve, but what's there is fully featured, which yes, I know sounds confusing, let me explain. DaVinci Resolve traditionally has seven pages, media, cut, edit, fusion, color, fairlight, and deliver. DaVinci Resolve for iPad cuts that down to two pages, cut and color. That's what I mean by it not being the full version of DaVinci Resolve. That being said, both the cut and color pages are the full featured versions of those pages. All of the tools are there, even the built-in fusion effects, transitions, and animated titles. Even the layout is almost identical, with the exception of the location of a few of the tools. So if you're familiar with the cut page and the color page, you really will feel right at home in the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve. Okay, let's talk about real world use. Between the cut and color pages, you can pretty much do everything you need to do in order to make a basic video for YouTube or other social media platforms. Plus the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve supports the Apple Pencil, keyboard shortcuts, and the speed editor. So it's actually super easy to cut a video on the iPad. So you can use DaVinci Resolve as a primary editing app if you're making basic videos for YouTube or other social media platforms. In fact, I'd go out on a limb and say that if you really took advantage of all the features Blackmagic Design packed into this app, you can make some pretty amazing stuff with it. But what I think is really exciting, and to be honest, what I'd probably use the app for the most is for doing rough cuts on the go for videos that I end up finalizing on my main computer. And that's all made possible with Blackmagic Cloud, which DaVinci Resolve for iPad supports. All I have to do is start a project on the cloud library and I can use the cut page to begin my edit while I'm traveling. And then when I get home, all I have to do is load the media onto my PC, open up the cloud project, relink the media, and get to work. Oh, by the way, did I mention that the iPad app supports Blackmagic RAW files? That means I could film a video on my Pocket 6K and edit it on the go. How cool is that? Okay, so I know that so far this video has probably sounded like one big ad because all I've done is talk about all of the cool stuff that DaVinci Resolve for iPad can do. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows, my friends. I mean, yes, everything that's there works great. I haven't run into any bugs yet, which is really good news considering this is a beta version. And yes, it's got some amazing video features that I've never really seen in a video editing app before. All that is well and good. but. There is one thing that is missing, one very important thing. Can you guess what it is? If you know me at all, you know what I'm about to say. Guys, where are all the audio tools? Yes, you've got dialog leveler and voice isolation. That's great. And you can even do clip level EQ. Okay, fine. That's honestly more than most mobile NLEs give you. But what about normalization? What about making sure that your audio is the right loudness for YouTube? What about dynamics and DSers and all of that stuff? If DaVinci Resolve for iPad is meant to be used essentially as a standalone NLE, then I personally think that focusing more on the audio side of things is 
a must. Plus, considering that audio is one area that almost all mobile NLEs tend to mostly ignore, adding this stuff would make DaVinci Resolve for iPad a no brainer. Other than that though, I'm super excited about DaVinci Resolve for iPad. Even though it's still in beta, it feels like a full release. It's working great. There are a ton of amazing features and the best part, this is only the beginning. All of the beta testers like myself are providing feedback that we think will make the app even better. So make sure you keep an eye on this channel so that you don't miss out on all of the updates to come. In the meantime, if you want to take a look at my favorite new feature in the full version of DaVinci Resolve, check out this video right here. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.